um, that was very kind. Uh, I sort of like the idea that I'm going to be like feeding all vegetables for the next day. So yeah, so my name is Daniel Hertz, and I am a first year master's student at uh, public policy sorry, at the University of Chicago. Uh, I also write a blog, um, and I'm here to talk to you about zoning. Um, and first of all, I'm really, really happy to be here. I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity. Um, most of the time when I start talking to people about zoning, which I actually do a fair amount, they figure out that they have somewhere else they have to be. Uh, so to have a captive audience is actually really great. So my ambitions for the next 10 or 15 minutes is to convince you that zoning is one of, if not the single worst law in the city of Chicago, despite the stiff competition for that title. I want to convince you that zoning is behind. Uh, the zoning is behind rapidly rising rents, uh, rising much much faster than income in huge parts of the city. It's sort of relatedly that it's behind a lot of uh, the negative aspects of gentrification, including displacement uh, and the sort of broader issue of economic segregation. And then finally, that zoning is actually half the story that you probably haven't heard behind Chicago's population loss and the sort of related problems of budget and, and things like that. Uh, but before I do that, I should probably spend a second explaining what zoning is and what it does. And actually, before I do that, I want to say um, I have tried to cram a lot of information into not a lot of space. So at some point, I am sure there will be a map or a graph where I will say something that won't make total sense to somebody or to many of you. Um, so please like, interrupt me when that happens. Don't worry about that. OK, beautiful. <laughs> uh, all right, so with that out of the way, so, so most of you have probably spent uh, exactly as much time thinking about zoning as you have spent playing SimCity. Um, and if that's the case, that's actually fine. If you, if you know that like green means residential and blue means commercial and uh, yellow means industrial, you're like 50% of the way there. Uh, and even if you haven't done that, that's OK, because I'm going to spend the next just like two or three minutes doing a really, really quick sort of history of how zoning came to be, uh, what it is, and, and how it works today. So you could start the story in a lot of places. I'm going to start in the late 1800s, when in places like New York and Chicago, uh, lots and lots of people are moving to these cities to work in factories. And increasingly, they're living in these incredibly small uh, apartments that frequently don't have things like plumbing or windows or fire exits. Uh, and the sort of like NPR listening class of the day gets really alarmed about this. And so <laughs> <laughs> there's like this, this, this wave that begins in New York and sweeps across the country of building regulations to, to sort of stamp out these unsafe living conditions. Um, and this isn't actually zoning, really. But I, I start here because this is one of the first like national movements of enacting regulations at the municipal level to control what the built environment looks like. We don't actually get real modern zoning until a, several decades later in the 1920s when the Supreme Court decides that it is constitutional for cities to tell property owners in very, very specific ways what they can and cannot do with their property. Uh, and this sort of takes two big forms. Uh, the first one is that we finally get to sort of sim city zone, where cities can say, OK, we're going to put all the residential stuff over here, and all the commercial stuff over here, and all the industrial stuff over here. We'll separate that out. And this is actually, this is a Google Street image of a side street in Pilsen with a corner store. Uh, if you've been in Chicago very long at all, you know that the vast majority of the city is set up in this very particular way where every four blocks is a commercial street, right? And in the middle is just houses. Uh, it wasn't always like that. Uh, the city actually didn't get around to banning commercial establishments like this on side streets until the 60s. Um, and if you walk around some of the older neighborhoods, like Pilsen or like Ukrainian Village, you can actually come across a few uh, corner stores and bars that were grandfathered in when it was made illegal to put businesses on side streets. So anyway, so that's, so that's the first thing modern zoning does, is it separates out uses. 